Hello, I'm Frida. I wanted to show you the dinner I'm cooking. First, I'm cooking um, lamb and potatoes for my husband. Because that's what he likes to eat for dinner sometimes. The kids like it too. They can dip some Arabic bread into it, like the, the flat feet of bread. They like to um, dip it in. Now, I like to cook the potatoes and onions together first, and the lamb is already soft over there. I'm going to make him some rice to put in it too, because uh, okay. he works a lot of hours. Huh? Yeah, they can come in. Just don't turn the TV on until I'm done recording. Turmeric in it? It's turmeric? We used to say turmeric, but it's actually turmeric. See how it's spelled? Can I get this at the... Uh, Jerusalem market for three forty nine, and um, the price isn't on this anymore. But this is roughly the same price, between three to four dollars. Fiddle, whole fennel seeds, and it's um, it's a pretty big box. It's eight ounces. I love getting my spices there because they're so much cheaper. And this little um, five ounce box of, of cardamom seeds is, um, it was $5.49. So I uh, put some of this in here because my husband likes it. Um, I'll just put a little because I don't want to overpower it. And then I'm going to keep the garlic. I usually put fresh garlic, but I uh, forgot to buy some today, so I'm going to put this uh, from Downer Tree, this chopped garlic, in spot. I'm going to cook it until the potatoes are somewhat soft, because the lamb is going to be soft when I put it in. And I have it as high as I can make it. I don't know how yours still works, but mine is is uh it needs to be on very high in order to run good and cook this as I want it cooked before I put the lamb in. Now the onions should be a little brown, caramelized too, and I like to cook potatoes in oil first before I fry meat because the starch of the potato does something to the oil that makes it uh, more non-stick. I don't know what it is. <laughs> There's something about it. I have potatoes and onions in here and a, a half, I chopped a half of a, a jalapeno pepper, a fresh one. And I put it in here too. So it cannot get all cooked. And I found that I like whole spices more than ground spices because the flavors are more potent. When uh, it's ground, it sort of disappears. So I'm going to cook these a little bit and then I'm going to add the garlic. Meanwhile, I'm going to get something ready to make for the children. Okay. Um, Potatoes are about done and the onions are pretty and caramelized in here. They're really pretty. Um, I have you guys, I'm re I'm, uh, have you guys on the computer, so, um, I can't really, it's, I guess I could pick it up and lift it over here, but I think it's easier to pick up the pan and show you. See? They're pretty and caramelized in there, and it's, 
got little drippings stuck to the bottom and that's how I want it to be. And then I will put the, the lamb in here. I'm feeding this water here for the kids because I want to boil some. Uh, excuse me. I'm going to boil something, uh, some um, raviolis to, to uh, fry in my in my air fryer. Um, but apparently you have to uh, boil them first, so I'm making the water hot for that. And here is my lamb going in. I'm using a flatted spoon so I don't get them liquid. And this water has been, this lamb has been boiling for several hours on low. So it's going to be soft going in. It's got going in. Um, I think my husband and some of his friends went together and and slaughtered it like they uh, purchased a live lamb and slaughtered it together. Or, uh, maybe they, they could have purchased one that was already butchered and, and cut it off. I don't remember. I forgot how they did it. But, he's it, got a lot in the freezer. So, now that the potatoes are cooked nicely, I'm going to brown this cooked lamb a little and then I'm gonna put the lamb broth in when uh when this is all cooked together and while the lamb is cooking in I'm going to put some of this garlic in because the it, lamb is better when the flavor of the garlic and, and the onion eats in together and cook with it Now I'm going to use a lot of this because it loses a lot of its flavor when you buy jars like this. It's not as good as the fresh, the, the kind of chop yourself. This, uh, this hijab, the material is very and it, I have to keep readjusting it because it's flipped. It's flipped all over the place. It's okay, I love the color, but I don't really like the material because it's so slippery. Some materials are really great and they don't flip a whole lot. This one flipped. There's a little turmeric in there, so it's going to have a little yellow color, and the spices are nicely toasted, and and, the, and they got all into the potatoes, the fennel and the cardamom, it's all all in the potatoes now, and I'm going to continue browning this lamb a little bit more, and then I'm going to add a little uh, tomato paste and and caramelize that nicely with it the meat and the potatoes together because for me the potatoes taste better when the tomato paste is caramelized and stuck to the outside of the potatoes and then when you, I, I add the, the uh, broth then uh, it will the flavor will get all in I'm, I'm trying to do this uh, for my husband for dinner because he works 12 hours a day and I think I don't always cook him a, a nice meal. Sometimes he has to eat what the kids eat. And I don't always eat his favorite food. But um, because he works 12 hours a day, I try. I try to have something, um, something sturdy for him and hearty for him to eat when he comes home. So there, let them brown a little. I don't want it to burn, but I do want it to brown. And then he bought me his tomato paste at a store, and I'll add a spoonful of that. It stays in the fridge, and 
whenever I make something, I add it a little. But because of um, acid reflux in the family, uh, I uh, I don't use very much, just a little, for color and for that caramelized flavor of, of tomato paste. It, it adds something to the uh, little stew. But this is, I, I would not call this soup. This deserves, I think it's more like a curry because it's so big and hearty. Okay, the lamb has browned enough now and it's all, it has all brown, brown stuff uh, stuck to the bottom. So now I'm going to put about one tablespoon like that of tomato paste. And that's all the tomato I'm putting in there. Uh, my husband has acid reflux and one of the twins has acid reflux. So I try not to put too much tomato. And this is going to caramelize onto the meat and onto the potatoes. And then I'm going to add it to the broth from boiling the lamb. Okay. I'm starting to smell it already. The, the smell. Um, a lot of the the main number one thing I learned about Iraqi cooking is that you cook with your nose. Your nose tells you if it's ready or not. Your nose tells you when you're ready to go on to the next step. Especially when it comes to the tomato paste and the garlic and the onions. Um, it's a very special technique that you can only learn from a teacher. It's not, not something, uh, it's hard to put something like that into a recipe that's written down. Now I'm going to add the broth, and the broth has some pieces in it that I'm not going to, I don't want to put in here really. I'm going to, there's some sediment in it that I'm going to keep for the cat, but it won't be pretty in the, in the soup. Come on now. Okay, that's about it. See, see, the little coating stuff coated in there. I know a lot of Arab cooks, um, they will throw that away, but I would go to give it to the cats. Because we have cats in the backyard and you're hungry. They get hungry too. So now I am going to put a little bit of lentils in here to give the to thicken the broth a little. And my husband doesn't like it to be overly sauce over the uh, runny so I'm going to put a, just a little bit maybe a half a cup of lentils in here red lentils sometimes I put yellow split peas in it but uh, most of the time I need some of them it, it depends how much liquid I have because the yellow split peas have to cook a lot longer and with this I'm just going to I'm going to wash this first because that's what I always do. I don't dump it in until it's washed. Um, red lentils have a kind of um, dust on them that comes out in the water. And, and we always wash it and throw it away. If I thought that the broth was too much, I, I would add the, the yellow split peas because I, I would want that to cook a lot longer. Okay, this is just going to, I'm just going to cover this and let it simmer and um, I'm going to turn it down because it doesn't need to cook high on high temperature. Those red lentils are not hard to cook, they will be very soft 
is I just turn it down and cook it gently. Um, now that it's simmering, I'm just going to turn it down to low or medium low. Let it boil slowly. Now that it goes to there, and I have to find that other thing for that. Sorry, buddy. I'm going to get y'all sleeping all over the place. I have to fix that. Okay, um, I will go for a minute and, and then I'll come back. Okay, lest I forget, lest I forget the salt. I'm going to add the salt. I put that in after I'm sure the lamb is soft. And the, I put about a tablespoon of sea salt. It's kosher, of course kosher salt from the Dollar Tree. So, there are a few Dollar Tree things in here. <laughs> and... I'm gonna make my husband some rice, some basmati rice to go with this. And then I'm going to... Uh, in here I'm gonna boil. The water isn't boiling yet, but I should probably put salt in to help it boil faster. And then I'll put the ravioli in. Lest I forget, there's one very important ingredient for this soup. It may be a little late in the game, but I am going to put this dry lemon in it. And I buy these from Jimmy Seal Market. It's supposed to give it a little bit of a lemony taste and it's very it's a lot better than a fresh lemon because fresh lemon if I put fresh lemon like a whole fresh lemon in there only in half it would have that bitter pithy flavor but if you don't I don't know why this works there is a way something in the process of dehydrating the lemon that it, it just, it doesn't turn bitter when it's cooked. You just get a, an earthy, lemony flavor. It's not as fresh as, a, as a, and not as tart as the uh, fresh lemon juice, but it has a subtle, uh, sort of uh, syrupy smell and taste in the soup. I'm saying soup, but it's more like a curry. And I had to change my head job because my other one was just slipping all over the place. Sorry about that. It was annoying to me and to you too, probably. Now, I want to for the pasta, for the ravioli. And I'm going to put it in and cook it for a few minutes. And then I'm going to, when it's cooked, I'm going to take it out, dip it in egg, and then dip it in, in panko crumbs and put it in the air fry. Okay, now, what I did with the rice, I uh, put it in this pot and I'm swishing it around with hot faucet water and when uh, the starch gets washed off the rice, I'm gonna drain it when, when the water is all cloudy from the starch and I'm gonna get fresh water from the faucet to cook it in. of rice and I'm covering it I'm just covering it with about a half an inch of water uh, a half an inch above the level of the rice because it needs extra water to rehydrate it now I'm not going to turn this high at all because I find that for me rice turns out better when I cook it low and slow um, this needs a little salt. Put about a tablespoon. Whoops. Don't want to get it crazy or crazily over salted. So, and one more trick I do with that 
Not for me, remember? This is for my husband and my kids. Um, I had sushi for lunch and um, I had the seaweed salad and then I had some of those um, air fried chips that I bought and I'm still quite full. So anyway. normally put sauce on them marinara but this time I'm going to use Kelly Kruger she's one of my uh, most loyal subby friends she, she's suggested that I try this for my first go with my um, air fryer so I'm going to pause now and do this with each one and then I'm going to put them in the air fryer I made, I put, uh, I don't have enough fruit, honey. <laughs> you can eat the pear. Okay, I, I'm going to put these in the air fryer. Okay, I have a Cuisina Concord X Large Air Fryer for oil-free cooking. Still in the box, never used. And I bought it months ago at, um, from Amazon and I haven't used it. I've been a little shy to use it, scared that I, I'll mess up, mess up or something. But now I'm going to try it. So while I take it out of the box, I'll just pause you guys a little. And when I have it out and heat it, I'll, I'll we'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, it's warming up. My ear is a whirring sound as it warms up. And, um, the raviolis are all nicely braided and ready to go in and I believe I'm going to spray a little uh, coconut cooking spray in there. This came from the Dollar Tree and these raviolis were on clearance at Kroger so I got them for almost nothing and now I'm going to use them. They're tomato and mozzarella raviolis. So I think there's some panita paste in the in the dough, in the pasta dough, and it makes them a little orange. So that's the color that's the color you see there. The breading. I can't wait to see how this turns out. When the little light changes color and I'll put it in. So while it warms up I'll just take a moment to show you this. This is the owner's manual. This is the brand name, Cozina. And it's this is the instruction manual for the Smart Fryer Excel. So, if you, if you are interested or looking for one, I'll let you know how this looks. And it includes this air fryer um, cookbook inside. So, I'm going to look at that for a minute while the air fryer gets hot. So, this is what it looks like. 
looks like on the inside. It's pretty big. You can see um, how big it is beside my hand and my head. So I'm going to spray this. And this thing lifts out. This thing can lift out for. I slide the little plastic thing back and then I press a little button and this thing lifts right out then. And then I put it back in because. And cover the little plastic. I'm just gonna do this because I don't want anything sticking. I don't know. It's non stick, but I don't want it to stick. Um, I'm gonna put a single layer at a time in there because I don't know if these can be layered or not. selection marinara from Kroger and I got it on sale with a coupon and I got a good deal I never pay full price for anything so or rarely pay full price for anything I can't say never because now and then I do but I always buy the best deal I can find and I'm going to warm this up to dip the smell like almost like popcorn that's what I like about batch macky rice it has a sweet smell kind of like popcorn and it tastes really good it tastes better than minute rice or something and you can might see a little yellow tint where I put that butter in so I'm gonna cover this and keep it for my husband this is the lemon potato curry can you smell it <laughs> Mmm, I smell it. It has the smell of just Mommy, a hit of some spices. Mommy, I want to go back to Melanie's house because I don't know why they have food. No? Anyway, so I smell the little spices in that, in that curry and it's so good. It smells so yeah. comforting. Yeah. I'm going to go get this out. Wow. Um, this isn't the rock. Mommy, this isn't the rock. No, it's a glass. Oh, these are toasted. I don't 
recommend it anyone with acid reflux to give it.